what does the Hotling Lemma provide to us when we take a partial derivative of profit function with respect to price, it will give us the value of our supply function, which is greater than and equal to zero. It means it's a positive amount. And when we take the partial derivative of our profit function with respect to input price, which is WI, it will give us the unconditional demand function, but with some negative value. So it means if we just get rid of this negative value, we will have our unconditional demand function. So the proof is comes from the envelope theorem. So there is a very detailed uh, definition or like proof of envelope theorem. But when we simply write down, what does it mean? It means when we take the partial derivative of Lagrangian with respect to price, when we take the partial derivative of Lagrangian with respect to price, it's equal to the partial derivative of profit with respect to price. The partial derivative of profit with respect to price. And when we get the partial, of, partial derivative of profit with respect to price, it will give us some value of y such that this y is equal to some function of p and w. And finally, we will get our y as a function of p and w, which is output price and input prices. This is by the envelope theorem, just, just simply. When we want to just prove, so it will take a lot of time. But simply, when we take the partial derivative of Lagrangian, when we have this profit function here, we have this profit function. When we take the partial derivative of Lagrangian with respect to price, it's equal to the partial derivative of profit with respect to price. As a result, when we get the partial derivative of profit with respect to price, we will have our y, our output value, which is this output value is such that as a function of some output and input prices. And finally, this y is equal to as a function of P and W, which is this one, is our supply function. Is our supply function. And the value of this supply function is greater than and equal to zero. Why zero? Because when we produce nothing, so then Y will be equal to zero. But when we produce something, it means when we have some input and we produce something, then it's positive, it's greater than zero. And also similarly, when we take the partial derivative of our profit with respect to input price, it would lead us to unconditional. Yeah. yeah. Why do unconditional, yeah, let me tell you that. Unconditional demand function, why? Because it's not conditional on our output level. Then you find the partial derivative in respect to W. Yeah. Then this is W. No. When we are talking about unconditional or conditional demand function, here we think about our Y, not our prices. Because specifically, we are thinking about optimal level of output, not the optimal level of input prices or output prices. Basically, in the market, we are thinking about how much we should supply. And that supply comes from Y, our output. So when our demand is a conditional on our output, we call that conditional demand function. But when there is no output in our demand function is unconditional. Because basically a firm is trying to maximize its profit level based on the amount of supply. Because in the market, we are thinking about demand, uh, sorry, supply and demand. You are thinking about supply and demand. So this supply, it comes from the output. And this demand, is comes from like the uh, demand of consumer, which they want to consume. 
Yeah? So that's why when the firm is trying to maximize its profit based on the optimal level of supply, then we are talking about conditional. But when there is no output in our demand function, it's called unconditional demand function. So we are talking just about why, not the prices. Because we need to maximize our output. We don't think about how much is the price. Because when we are talking about like perfect competitive market, usually in perfect competitive market, input prices and output prices are given. So we don't need to be much worried about that because we need to adjust ourselves with that input and output prices. What should we adjust? We should adjust this one. So may I suppose the first the equation is unconditional? Yeah. And this one is usually is called net supply. Net supply. But we are not talking about supply as an as a unconditional or conditional. Why? Because supply itself has a Y. So supply is Y. This supply itself is Y. So when Y is itself is supply, so we are not talking about conditional or unconditional there. We are only talking about conditional or unconditional when we are talking about input demand. So because when we are talking about input demand, there is two ways to think about that. One in terms of prices and another in terms of output. What does it mean? How much input we need, it depends on how much output we, produ we produce. And also how much input we need to buy, it depends on how much is the price of that input and the price of that output. But when we are talking about Y as a supply, so itself Y is included. So here we're only thinking about P and W. So that's why when we are talking about conditional and unconditional, we are talking only about factor demand function our input, unconditional demand function for our factor, for our input. We are not talking about supply because supply itself is a Y, is our quantity. So that's why by envelope theorem, we can find out when we take the partial derivative of profit with respect to price, it's lead to supply function. When we take the partial derivative of profit with respect to input price, it lead us to unconditional demand function, demand function for our factor or input but with some negative value here.